I've ever got to hear in my life. Simon St. Pierre. some renown as a fiddler at bluegrass and folk music festivals throughout the eastern United States, performing the fiddle tunes in the traditional French-Canadian style, which he learned as a youth back home in Quebec. Just after Christmas of 1976, we made the journey northward to his home, Smyrna Mills, Maine, where we were treated to some fine traditional music, as well as a man in his family's gracious French-Canadian hospitality. We have endeavored to capture some of his music life on film, so as to acquaint you with the rich folk traditions of the French Canadian Republic. Our guide on this exploration is Simon St. Pierre. Uh, the sad on real. I played that a lot for square dancing. I'll try it real slow so you can... set some key deep. St. Benoit, Quebec, not far from Montreal. Simon became acquainted quite early with fiddling. His father and older brother, both of whom worked in the woods as lumberjacks, were accomplished fiddlers. Really 
young boys, you know. My older brother was pretty good. Okay. And uh, how I really liked that, that song. Okay. Said to myself, you know what? I want to try that film. I want to try it, but you know what? Let me touch it. He was afraid that I'm going to bust it, drop it on the floor or something. So I said to myself, when I'll get old enough, I'm going to get me a film. My first film, I was 14 years old. I just learned that by myself. They're not to show me anything. But uh, it took me quite a while, but after I get it gone. You know? Up in Canada, most the old fellow, the old timers, they used to play fiddle and tap his feet. They don't have no guitar, most of them, no piano, so they do that for square dance. camp, you know. Those days, they they was going on the fall and spent the whole winter in the lumber camp. It was a long ways from home, and the only transportation they had was horses, you know. So they stayed there for four or five months. My father said that always a guy, you know, you bring the fill with them. You know, the fill of and they had some step dancer. <laughs> On a weekend, he said they have a ball, you know, for musician, step dance, and he said that's the only thing they have for amusement. Two years before I get married, I went way up in North, that's way up in North. Not too far from Cap 49, 100 miles in the woods. And I stayed there for six months. So we live on the log, log camp. And there was some guy, <clears throat> some guy from Caberton Island, Nova Scotia. I met a lot of, lot of good fellas up there. We stay in the lumber camp, you know. And I learned a lot of tunes from those guys. They have a different style, those guys. They got all different ways, you know. They play Irish, Scottish, a lot of Scottish music. She's on fire. <laughs> Got different way to play. So my music, a little bit the music that I play, I get some from a little bit everywhere. I got some from Quebec, some from those guys, Caberton, Island, Nova Scotia. And I try to learn some of those American songs, you know, bluegrass songs, songs, you know. So I think I got it all together. Tradition, the woods of eastern Canada offered its workers little in the way of income. 
Seeking better job opportunities in the United States, Simon went down to south to Patton, Maine, where he worked as a foreman over a crew of Canadian woodsmen on bond. From 1952 to 1966, Simon worked for this private corporation. During this time, Simon gave up playing the fiddle. The work was exhausting, and Simon had to devote more time to raising his growing family. In the mid-60s, Simon's interest in fiddling was renewed through his acquaintance with a local fiddler named Claire Lake. Claire earns his living as a television repairman in Island Falls, Maine, and makes as well as plays a fine fiddle. Before we leave Smyrna Mills, Simon and Claire will play one more tune, Dixie Hoedown. Said and done, Simon can be found in the place he loves the best, with his family and music in the north woods of Maine.